yep, yep. Um, uh, one second. Um, sorry, guys. Uh, important phone call. Yeah. Well, listen. Okay. Having said that, let me call you back um, in about an hour. I've got an important uh, uh, television program uh, starting here. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Come on. All right. Well, it's the Grotty Warlock show number uh, 79, I think. It's June, no, January 8th. I'm counting from the 6th. So it's 8th. It's a Friday. It's going to have a Friday comic book party up here in the comic book room. So, yes. Pete the cat is here, and uh, he's a little confused. So, um, I was looking at this Little Abner comic, and of course, Little Abner's favorite comic strip character, favorite comic book character, was Fearless Fosdick, who was a Dick Tracy parody. But a, and the Dick Tracy comic strip was violent. I mean, people got shot in the forehead and things, but this uh, Dick Tracy parody that that Al Cap created for uh, to be a Little Abner's favorite comic strip was the violence was just exaggerated a hundred times, and uh, so um, and he tried to uh, mimic Chester Gould's art. But look at the ads. What are you up to over there, Pete? Gotta monitor Pete a little bit. And if you like baseball, there's some cool uh, ads. Like that. Um, this issue is from Atomic Magnifying Glass. Damn. Oh, glasses. That'll do the trick. Um, this is January 1949, definitely, definitely golden age, but fits in a silver age bag, so this company was being cheap with their uh, size, so, or is it? Wait a second, I might need a golden age, uh, Backing board for this. Let's take a look here. Yeah. This must be a golden age. I don't know, man. This is an old uh, Mylite I've had forever. So it must be uh, the size for larger comics. Let's see if it fits. Yeah, it's fitting. <laughs> How about that? How about that one? Pete left. Good. Why? Wow, that sounds rude. I just don't want him pissing on something. This is a promotional <laughs> comic book. <laughs> well. Let's see, um, let's take a look at it, shall we? Major in a pack, the Space Ace. Here it is, gang, the best chocolate drink in the world. Try it. It, it looks like a pack of cigarettes, but I guess it's like an Ovaltine kind of thing. Uh, certainly a cool-looking uh, 50s science fiction comic. I don't think this is worth much, because I think they printed like a 50 million of them. But it's sure cool. Whoa. Yeah, they compare the creation of Inipac. Look at that to the invention of the atomic bomb and television and its importance. And yet you've never heard of it. For them first, the hills have eyes. 
A night of terror, a day of vengeance. What began as a vacation ended as a nightmare. The hills have no eyes. No one, the lucky ones, died first. The most shocking, terrifying film. Okay, I'm gonna try and see if the Silver Age bag board works with this. Who knows, it might. <laughs> what fun. Yeah, I think it's about right. Nah, that should probably be a Golden Age board. This is Dr. Grazi Orlock. You will listen to this radio station 24 hours a day. Oh, it won't fit. the only radio station... God damn it. By the magical Pleiadian angels who live in the hollow earth below your feet. Here's another great <coughs> on 106.9 FM, Radio Gratu, Stereo. Well, still monitoring the news and everything, and looks like uh, Nancy Pelosi wants to, to impeach Trump and get him out um, by early of next week because then you could never run again in four years if you're impeached. You know, they impeached him before, but the Senate didn't go along with it. But this time the Senate is uh, is also uh, is now stacked of uh, Democrats. So who knows what will happen. Amazing. Well... Oh, the X-Men theme's playing. This was playing during the last episode. Um, so I think I'll show you my uh, Silver Age X-Men comics, which I used to think I had a lot of them, but I guess I don't. But Let's see. This, um, apparently, this is not in good shape. Apparently someone once tried to sell it for 10 cents. Um, it's uh, November 64, and this is where uh, the X-Men go up against Anus the Untouchable. I'm sorry, it's Unus. But I've seen somebody somewhere on the internet change that for grins. So that's that's number eight. And here's a to me a pretty high grade copy I got back years ago of issue uh, 24. But it doesn't have a backing board so it's time to open it up and correct that error. This is what this episode's gonna be, me opening old comics and talking, and um, that's just what it's gonna be tonight, this afternoon, whatever the fuck it is. Oh, let's look at it while we got it open. Wow, amazing, god damn. You can join the speed revolution. Turn your hands into explosive defense mechanism. Ooh, the smell of this comic is so good. Yeah, man, uh, this is a uh, pretty cool, dude. The plague of the locust. Let's get you boarded. Mr. 24. I was at the supermarket yesterday and I was at the checkout counter and they had a DVD with two discs of the X-Men animated series with the first two seasons and it was like under 10 bucks. And I just Throw it into the bag. And, um, 
Okay. Yeah, these were very affordable when I was buying comics back in the 80s. I mean, uh, I was buying X-Men and I was buying Fantastic Four and, uh, you know, whatever I could get. I, I wasn't getting as many Spider-Man comics because they were expensive even then, but, uh, but X-Men, uh, the early X-Men, I mean, you could get these early comics for, they must not have been much if I was buying them in junior high school. Yeah, junior high school, high school. At Lone Star Comics, that you may know as mycomicshop.com. This morning, the uh, Crypt Keeper of Castle Hills in San Antonio uh, had a special episode where he showed Monster Comics and, and dedicated to it to me, and I appreciate that. That was a cool thing. Um, most of them, yeah, he was right. I didn't have... That's one of those cool... God damn, they were so great. These these cartoons were done by Lantree... Crantree Lawrence out of Canada. And the acting, the voices were so great. You know, they had John Vernon playing the voice of Iron Man and... Uh, oh, well, he did several voices. And, and uh, they had... Uh, they did five Marvel superheroes and they basically traced kind of traced the art from the comics and uh, the animation was not stellar but the music was great and the voice acting was great and it was just you could read along with the comic book and it was like uh, it, it came to life uh, they um, they did they had Thor Captain America the Hulk Iron Man and the Submariner there were five and they were packaged in 30-minute episodes, and every 30 minutes you had you had five, I think, individual cartoons that made up a 30-minute adventure. So I think they intended, you know, I forget what day of the week was supposed to be what, but you know, I think Thursday was supposed to be the day for Thor, since the day is named after Thor, you know, Thor's Day. I think Friday was a submariner, probably because of fish, you know, and. Catholics eat fish. I don't know why they did Submariner on Friday, but I think they did. I don't know. Hell, I was one year old when those comics, came, those those cartoons came out. But it's just from what I've read. But most TV stations did not run the 30-minute block that had the opening titles and the Mar Mary Marble Marching Society theme. So to the point where that the that footage of the theme song is almost lost if you look for it on. YouTube, it's very, it's, you can get like copies from Argentina in another language or um, black and white, but it's just, no, but most stations used individual cartoons and just put them into cartoon blocks. So you'd have Popeye and then you'd have Captain America and then you'd have Bugs Bunny and, and then you, it would make you keep coming back and uh, every day to see the next adventure, Captain America, and then five days you got a whole Captain America adventure, but that's how those cartoons went. Okay, so the, when I talk to you guys, you guys fucking slow me down. I'm trying to get this done. And I'm getting like two comics boarded per 10 minutes, but I enjoy telling you the stories. And this wouldn't even be happening at all if it wasn't for you guys, because like I said before, you guys kind of hold me accountable to get this stuff done. So we got 8, 24, 27. Oh, then I've got 28. Another uh, amazingly uh, condition is just great. It felt so amazing back in whenever I was getting these 1980, 1981 to, to go to Lone Star Comics and come home with a slice of the 1960s. I mean, to me, that was just this wonderland the silver age to actually have a silver age comic in my collection it just look at all that the mail that was coming in um, it almost make you think it was a popular comic because the, the x-men didn't sell well um ooh, this smells so good oh man i feel like i don't smoke cigars but i imagine this is what 
those guys that just sit in their wood paneled uh, rooms smoking cigars. How that must feel like to what it, just yeah. The smell of old comics, you know, you just don't don't get it from these new comics. Of course, it's probably the smell of the comic actually breaking down and. and <laughs> I don't want to be a depressing son of a bitch, but, uh, okay, this is other stuff you could have gotten that month. Yeah, the Whale of the Banshee. It's, it's one of those smells, like, um, my wife does not agree with me on this, but I love the smell of Play-Doh. Love the smell of it. I don't get it. Why did, how could someone not like the smell of Play-Doh? But then she doesn't like the Beach Boys. But people that grew up in California tend to not like the Beach Boys, I find. Okay, gang, call in those requests. We're spinning whatever platter is you request here on Radio Draw 2. This is number 31. That's the mutant mailbox, I'll have you know. Damn. Here's a list of the stations that, uh, you see it there? The television stations that you could watch the the cartoons on. Where is my magnifying glass for crimp? It was, oh, here it is. <laughs> Let's see. I'm looking for Gratuville. Oh, San Antonio. It was on Ken's channel. What the hell is that? Is that channel 6 or 8? Tell me, Castle Hills. I don't know. Crypt Keeper will know. I used to live in San Antonio. I mean, I lived in San Antonio from age 1 to 4 or 5. But not a lot of memories of that. And then 3rd and 4th grade were spent in San Antonio. And that was my awakening as a comic book collector and the, the era of the wacky packages and everything and monsters and Mego action figures which we called dolls. Um, Tokyo, Japan. Um, this is a cool invention, man. Look at this. This is the hardware store. They know there's a lot of old people that shop there, so they sell shit like this. Atomic-powered uh, magnifying glass. I just... Oh, I had a red wagon, and my uh, this sticker is, is... You can still barely see it. There were two of them on the back of my red wagon. My older brothers put on there. could have gotten these two issues that month. Amazing, incredible, astounding, fantastic. And I saw a message on Instagram that Night Tiger Comics tried to call me. I'm going to put my actual phone number. I'm going to send you a message with my actual phone number because I don't, I guess I don't, I don't hear it or know it when Instagram is calling me. This is a beat to hell copy, but it's uh, 35. That's, uh, that's when, um, you know, a comic isn't selling well. Spider-Man's brought to save it. Just so you know.
And then the other trick to sell a comic, if Spider-Man doesn't work, who else was really popular in the 60s? Um, uh, Mo think Monsters, who was the biggest monster guy in the 60s that they always used to sell why it was Frankenstein's monster, of course. So let's bring in Frankenstein. Now this would have been, what, six years before Marvel actually put out a Frankenstein comic for real, so... So, I don't think this is the same Frankenstein. Or could it be? I wonder if they ever explain that. I'm sure some, someone has gone back retroactively and explained that. The X-Men meet Frankenstein. Enough said. Excelsior. You can get a jet engine for how much is that? A couple bucks, probably. Face front, hang loose. Enough said. My philosophy is that this comic of this era should be played, should be read while you're playing music of the same era. Then you get the complete experience. But that's just me. I, I mean, I'm sure if there are people that read this while listening to Tupac and maybe they're happy, but, but I just can't imagine reading how the X-Men met Frankenstein while listening to Wet Ass Pussy or whatever you uh, people listen to. to this is our president. <laughs> Joe Biden, president? He gave an hour-long interview. What was her name? Cardi B? Just to... Can you believe it? An hour-long, he talked to that moron. in for a fun ride. Yeah. But I'll have you know I didn't go out and take the flags down in front of my house because I still love the, it's the country, right? But, um, I had them up when Obama was president, when Trump was president, they'll be up when this guy's president. Because uh, it's about the country. It's not like the neighbor that put the flag, his flag up for two days when, when Biden was first uh, uh, elected. Okay, this is when they started to uh, dedicate each issue to kind of one character for a while, or, or a theme, and they just weren't sure what to do for a while, and, um, and then they just went to reruns and started reprinting older issues in the early 70s. I already talked about this the other night, and if you watch every episode, you probably are realizing it's like, you know, listening to your grandfather tell the same stories over and over again, you just have to nod, it's like, like you never heard it before. Look at that white back cover. I have a few, these may have all come from the same collection because I was buying them at Lone Star Comics. I wouldn't be surprised if if they were all taken care of by the same person back in the good old days of the Silver Age. Silver Age Dave has not been on in a couple of months. Um, I'm sure he's very busy. This issue of Not Brand Eck to me is one of the greatest comics in the history of mankind. You need to seek it out. It's when they do a parody of the, they do a parody of Fantastic Four number one and of uh, the Mort Weisinger era of Superman with all the super pets and different super characters. It's magnificent. Ray Severin art.
at every panel, the Fantastic Four number one is lovingly parodied. The end of the X-Men. Oh wait, no, there was another era in between the big title, headline titles, and the uh, going to uh, reruns, repeats, reprints. Uh -huh. That was um, when they went to this, you know, getting people like Stranko in. Who's the superstar artist at Marvel at the time? That's Stranko doing that Kirby crackle. And then, um, they brought over the superstar from DC, Neil Adams. Last night I was talking to you guys about how Stan Lee just would not give up on Kazar and kept our Kazar and bringing him back over and over again. So, um, this was a comic I traded for in uh, third grade. Um, so this would have been my first... No, this would have been my first Silver Age comic I got during the Bronze Age, you know, as a back issue. Because obviously when I was four, you know, when I picked up Choo Choo Charlie, that was a Silver Age comic. But, you know, as a collector, this was my first Silver Age comic. And it was just so cool. Wow, I got a comic with a corner box. Look up this singer. Her name is Lee Morse. Lee, and then Morse spelled M-O-R-S-E. Singer from the 20s. She, she looks like someone from today. It's just hauntingly uh, beautiful. Uh, um, this is a giant size terrible condition this I got from a wounded wonder pack see they cut something out there and it's got tears but uh, this is from the reprint era that's a reprint from so that's X-Men uh, 72 And then I guess it was 94 when the new X-Men started after first appearing in Giant Size X-Men number one. I remember all those Giant Size comics being on the market. But somehow I didn't pick up that one. Why do I have that feeling my life is ending? It's just depressing knowing that we had four really good years and, and they're trying to brand, I don't know, I don't know, it's, it's, it's gonna be alright, no it's not gonna be alright. I was, what made me think of Trump is that whenever I see this character, she, she reminds me of Kaylee McEnany and the press secretary that would tear the press corps apart, <laughs> it's just, draw me. I mean, it's just... I mean, it's an Archie ripoff, but it's a really good one. Really good Archie kind of ripoff. Maisie, Stevie's girlfriend. Okay. Okay, this is, uh, this is Golden Age. Are these the Golden Age bags?
this was used as the Aquaman theme. This song is by Billy Muir's Supersonic Guitars, but they used it as the Aquaman theme on a rec children's record by Leo Records. Leo was the children's wing of MGM Records. And it's a record I, that was bought for me by my mom and when I was probably five. So I always heard this is my first exposure to surf music. I, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Um, this like this changed. This song changed my life. But they only played a little bit of it. It faded out about right there. But I didn't know who did it for years until I finally discovered that it was Billy Muir's Supersonic Guitars. The Mighty Hercules. Who looks suspiciously like Superman. Damn. I love this cartoon, even though I wish, you know, Greek mythology was taken a little more seriously, and I found the little, what do you call the little um, centaur guy was very annoying. Um, but yeah, let's get this sucker bagged and boarded. Board. Bag. Well, so the current word is no, you guys don't need your two thousand dollar checks. We need to put that money into the the V's, you know, the, the V's? Because the V's are more important than you're, you're just going out and spinning some, that's the current word I'm hearing, but I don't know. Can the world heavyweight boxing champion match his fists against the lethal masters of the martial arts? You're not supposed to mention the V word on YouTube from what I understand. Real Screen Comics. Announcing the Daisy Defender Air Rifle. It's a board. Let's see if the Golden Age or a Silver Age board will be appropriate for real screen comics. This is a DC comic from the 50s. I'm thinking a Silver Age board will work. But if that's the case, why haven't I already done it? Yeah, that'll work fine. Because even though it's 10 cents, it's probably early, early 60s. Let's take it out and see. My partner, get the swell cowboy knife and chain. Just see what did I just see? Oh my gosh! I gotta start buying these original Rudolph comics. Captain Strange, like you need to come back. We haven't uh, seen you since Christmas, and uh, I doubt Captain Strange Life watches this channel. But but he has he had to get a new computer. Well, oh man, this is 53, February 53. Okay, so we know that DC in the Golden Age was printing their comics in a size that fits in, I think, maybe I got, maybe I got Golden Age bags way back when, I just don't know, but cool, real screen comics. So, so I got a bunch of more real screen comics. It's like Daisy Air Rifles bought advertising space on the back of DC Comics a lot in that era. The cool thing about the 60s, though, is on the back cover of almost every DC comic was Aurora out of Hempstead, New York. Aurora making all the the mo monster model kits and superhero kits and um, uh, 
model of the slot car racing. You know, they did all kinds of stuff. Of these uh, funny animal comics. Let's see what this is. Uh, March 53. Probably these all came from the same owner. They're they're real close in and uh, numbering, and I probably bought them all at the same time, but then I, I don't remember. You know, God bless the kids that took, their, took care of their comics. They were probably poor kids. And they're like, this was something else that they got a 10 cent comic and they kept it nice. Um, this is Donald from the FC Street Gang. I want to hear the theme from that new Bruce Lee movie. You know, the librarian at my school, he had all these 50s toys and when he was a kid, and you know, he was a natural born librarian and archivist because he, um, he kept everything pristine because he didn't grow up rich and he knew those toys cost a lot of money he wanted to keep them nice and he kept the boxes and stuff those are the god bless the anal retentive kids that saved their the boxes and treated their comics and their toys like uh, treasures it was the rich brats that tore those fucking comics to shreds like I showed you the other night. That stack of comics, it smelled good, but some of those comics were eeeeh. Oh, look at these shoes, man. You'd be styling. Imagine if you wear those to school today. You'd either be really cool or you'd be a pile of intestines. Uh, that's what I remember. The PF Flyers. I mean, I, maybe it was Keds. I don't know. I just remember the little circle there. Yeah, PF. There was a great parody of this um, ad in the old Mad EC comic. My wife loves this restaurant called PF Chang's, and whenever we go, I call it PF Flyers. And, she has no idea what I'm talking about. It's like one of those... Even people of my generation don't know what I'm talking about because I grew up in the 70s and... But... Um, but I understand all the 60s references. Because that... I feel like I was... I, I feel like I was born at the wrong... in the wrong time. Golden age definitely won't work. There. I'm learning things here that probably most of you already know. What bags and boards fit with what comics. But, uh, stuff I always meant to do, and now, I'm, now I have a little extra time to do it. And, and then we kind of postponed going to to look at that house that we wanted to look at. Because now with this administration, if, unless some miracle happens, I mean, Biden is, unless, unless Trump releases all these files and everybody's embarrassed and horrified, let away in handcuffs, uh, and says, look, aliens really exist. This is what really, you know, unless the world is, it looks <laughs> thrown into upheaval by something like that. Some Hail Mary pass. It looks like you know this Biden's coming in, and it's just going to embolden all these. And, and the state we were looking at is notoriously controlled by a Democrat governor, uh, a Democrat governor that thinks it's okay to abort babies after they're born, which is kind of a, a scary concept. But uh, so 
Berlin. Plus, it's snowing there. And then it's going to snow here. Uh, this is Friday. It's supposed to snow here um, Sunday. It doesn't snow here that often. It's like a 70% chance. Yeah. Pretty, it's going to be cool, dude. I got a lot of real screen comics here. <laughs> Just what you uh, guys want to see, right? No, I want to see Hulk 181. I want to see the first appearance of Carnage. I, I want to see key issues, key issues. Your key issue is that if you don't like comics like this, you are insane. That is your issue. Because look at that, man. That could be made into a poster. On You know, put that... It's just amazing. Life isn't really meaningless. Oh, look at this. Polio. Remember... <laughs> well, I gotta read this ad. Research will mean victory. Gamma globulin obtained from human blood protects for a few weeks. It's in very short supply. When polio is around, keep these precautions. Keep clean, don't get fatigued. Avoid new groups, don't get chilled. The vaccine is not ready for 1953, but there's hope for the future. That must have been so fucking scary. Every summer, kids terrified. Mom's terrified going out to play, uh, catching polio. I mean, the V's are are, are really uh, those wonderful inventions, but everyone, everyone seems really scared of this new one, especially that nurse that passed out like during the press conference. That doesn't give, give you like high confidence in this fucking thing. these damn things makes me want to go downstairs and turn on YouTube and watch some Fox and the Crow cartoons also I'd like to find this song on, on 45 RPM uh, on a record you know vinyl uh, anyway uh, there's two versions two different bands do this song comic book crazy I haven't really researched what it's worth. Cracker Jack's magnetic car. Satan's sinister sister fears on the prowl. She's returned from the dead to live again, and this time she's after your skin. Meet Peter Panda. The artwork in these damn comics is just unparalleled. Unlike a few years later when the funny animal comics were left to like uh, Gold Key and, and Charlton and um, what was the other I think Charlton was like, you know, for a while the Hanna-Barbera cartoon, cartoon uh, licenses went to Charlton in the early 70s, you know, like the Flintstones and stuff. And the artwork was just not stellar. The biggest and most exciting ape picture yet as a world of apes battles for domination of planet Earth. The conquest of the planet of the apes from 20th century Fox made it PG. On a DVD? The, 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 the print used on the DVD for Conquest of the Planet of the Apes is not the one that played in theaters. It's a lot bloodier with people getting shot in the head and horrible stuff. A lot bloodier. This one's not even bagged and boarded. Summer fun. How to take you guys to go see Lee Harvey Oswald's grave? Uh, not far from here. Uh, 
it's it's you know you got to know where to find it, where to go to find it and I can show you exactly if you ever are there how to find his grave not that you probably want to but because he's not really supposed to be there they're supposed to uh, dug up his body to examine it in the late 70s and the general consensus is that it was uh, not him or a different body was put in there or something or other but anyway so it's interesting if you're into that kind of thing have you ever been to Palisades Amusement Park? They sure did advertise it a lot in these old comics and and uh, even songs about it. Wait. Golden Age? Too big. Where are the silver age? Right here. This is actually starting to pick, I'm starting to pick up speed. I'm starting to get get into the flow with some cool tunes and stuff. Yeah. Ooh, Reggie and me. 23. Reggie and me. Oh yeah, look how they're doing superhero kind of comics here. So, I would almost guarantee you this is from 1966. Yeah, April 67. Yeah, um... Yeah, that, the Batman TV show was so pervasive in its influence on culture that even Archie turned into Batman, kind of. Um, something else. The more you understand the time period, the, the better. And I understand the time period. Even my oldest brother, who, uh, God bless him, he passed away about 10 years ago, but... You know, we were talking, I'm telling him about something that happened when I was learning to walk, when I was like one years old, well, I don't know when you learned to walk, but um, I was born in 65 and I was telling him about the when Batman premiered on ABC TV, and he was sure it premiered in September, like any new TV show would, would start with the fall season. I said, no, it was. It came on in mid-season. It started in January of 66. And he, he, did, he said, that's just not, but it is, I was right. And the reason that's important is there's so much Batman merchandise and so much Batman imitation stuff that's 1966 because of the whole year was an explosion of Batman and superhero and camp, uh, you know, big sound effects kind of stuff. Uh, so that's why so much of it's 66. And the reason there's so much early Beatles stuff dated 1964 is they they came on the Ed Sullivan, Ed Sullivan show in January of 64, just a couple of months after Kennedy was killed. And, and when they premiered on the Ed Sullivan show, then things took off even more. They were already popular in England, and, and I think some of the cool kids already knew who they were in 63, but in 64, every fuck freaking kid in the, in the, in, in the United States knew who the Beatles were, and then um, it uh, became huge, as Donald Trump would say. T-Man. Let's see if there's anything else I want to show you in this box before I cover it up. Oh, let's look at... Did I show you the Wonder Woman comics? Let's look at some Wonder Woman comics. Everybody's bitching about the new movie and how uh, horrible it was. Someone said it was wor worse than Birds of Prey. No, it was not worse than Birds of Prey, but... I mean, it had its moments, but... But still, it just, it was, 
The first one was great. Although, why they said it in World War I, I'm still not sure. I think just so it wouldn't be looked at as an imitation of Captain America, the first Avenger. But, um... But, um... Having Steve Trevor come back and uh, possessing the body of uh, some innocent guy, uh, and then they didn't. Did they know that whether the guy's soul was gone or whether he was dead or was his soul still inside the body? You know, um, I mean, it was. Uh, they didn't really seem to care much. And then, so what were the relatives of the of the guy who Steve Trevor inhabited his body? What if the relatives tried to call him or stop by his apartment? He'd have to pretend to be that guy. Something they never approach. Um, this is, to me, this is a key issue. I doubt it's on the Key Collector app, but this is where they uh, they they take her back and put her in the golden age of comics. So, um, so they're uh, 1940s adventures, but they're new, but they're done in the old era. And that's what the cheetah's supposed to look like. In, in the world I exist in, it's it's just an outfit she wears. She's not literally a, like a wear creature. Music for people who are very, very fat. Radio 107.9 I'm supposed to be reading numbers, right? 162. I mean, you can look these up on mycomicshop.com. Give you some homework to do. Um, 164. Wonder Woman going all Thunderball underwater. Um, 165. Yeah, these are pretty inexpensive when I was buying them back in the 80s, too. That's 167. Oh, this is one I got. 168. I got this not long ago, I guess, in the last couple of years, Duncan Bill Books. Boy, that, it's really in good condition. Look at that. The Human Centipede. Well, wasn't that the name of that perverted movie? Was it The Human Centipede? <laughs> was that what it was called? It was the hum yeah, I think it was. Okay, a gorilla cover. You're pretty enough to be a gorilla, so I'm going to turn you into one of us. This is a great cover, but the comic is not in good shape. Oh, and then the uh, era. It's goodbye to the past for Wonder Woman. See, it was chewed on by a Democrat. Okay, what number was that? Someone chewed over the number. No, 179. Then I've got 181. I really need to upgrade these. This is when she lost her powers and became like a Emma Peel. James Bond kind of uh, thing. The new Wonder Woman. You know, the way they handled the whole Steve Trevor thing in the TV show, um, Steve Trevor was her boyfriend in the, during World War II, so it went from uh, CBS, I think, had it the first season, the 75, 76 season. It was a World War II adventure. And then I think ABC bought, you know, it went, the, season, the series went over to ABC and they wanted to make it cheaper. So they set it in present day, 1977. And, uh, and so she was just now suddenly in present day. And um, she, now she, her boyfriend is Steve Trevor's son. So, um, and I think Captain America did that too, right? Wasn't that with, um, 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 
Peggy Carter and Sharon Carter? Was that her daughter or was that her niece? I don't remember. But it's still a little perverted, you know. I've been in suspended animation, so I'll date a younger relative of my old girlfriend. This is a great kind of gothic cover. And I must have liked it so much, I've got three copies of it. What is going on? What kind of... Uh, uh, yeah, lots of this gothic looking stuff. You know, Dark Shadows was on television, so... Alright, oh, a Christmas cover. I gotta put this with my Christmas stuff. Woody Woodpecker. It's a good thing I'm looking through this. Amazing. Tower of comics here. Look at this. I'm not too good at that, but I'm learning. God damn it. BCW boxes indeed. Shit boxes. Fuck you. Excuse my language there. It's like 3D, isn't it? Is this worth anything yet? I always thought this cover was really bad. Just bad. I like. I just like Black Panther's head looks. Like everything looks very weird. It's like Jack Kirby. Something's bad. Something's wrong with it. Okay, these 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 are Bronze Age comics, but I might as well put boards in them. Get your fucking radio brought to bumper stickers today at Wolco, Woolworths, Kmart, and TGY. Black Panther Six. And I bought this thing because the cover is so gorgeous. Black Widow number two, and the artwork inside is just pretty terrible. Look at all this wasted black space. I don't know, maybe it reads well. I'll give it a chance. I mean, I started buying those things for the cover with Alex Ross. I wish they'd just come out with a print set so you don't have to buy all the bad comic back behind the covers. Bag this issue of Conan the Barbarian. Just great stuff, man. I think I have multiple copies of this issue. This one is not stellar. Oh, but look at that. It's the Son of Satan. Is there some Son of Satan TV show that's supposed to be on soon? But this was the ad that got me. I sent off for my Foom kit, Friends of Old Marvel. All right, all right, all right. I think I'm gonna take a break. 
get something to drink and uh, walk the dog. And then I'll be back for more exciting comic book bagging and boarding fun. So, be seeing you.